And I will declare over you in the name of Jesus that the wickedness of the wicked must come to an end. In the mighty name of Jesus, whatever has been challenging you in life, challenging your family, tormenting you and your family, I pray in the name of Jesus it will come to an end in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare it in the name of Jesus. Whatever is pulling you back to stay in the hold, the assignment will come to an end in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is, I've been challenging your family. It will come to an end today in the name of Jesus. Whatever I've been fighting against your finances, we come to an end in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Whatever it is that the enemy has been using as a lot in your life. Whoever, whoever it is that is a lot around you that is blindfold you from seeing the future and seeing your destiny, lot must go. I say, lot must go. The same way lot left Abraham. And after he left, God said, now lift up your eyes and see. You will see your destiny. You will see your purpose. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, thank you. I bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus. That the wickedness of the wicked. Will come to an end. I declare it. In the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Ghost. And in the authority of Christ Jesus. And so shall it be. In Jesus name. Come on somebody shout amen. Come on somebody shout amen. Amen. Let me give you this quick. I won't preach it. I'll just give it to you. How to enter a new season. I'll do this very quick so we can Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. He said, do not remember the former things. Nor consider the things of old. I will do a new thing. It shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and a river in the desert. In the desert. The Bible said, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. I truly believe God as launchers into the new. And I truly believe some of us are there, but some are not there yet. Because few people don't know how to enter. There's a way you enter the new season. What, what is a new season? A season is a specific period marked by unique and supernatural events. In the new season, you will begin to experience supernatural events. Things that have been difficult for you, God will make it simple. There's some things will happen effortlessly because you are in the new season. In the old season, there's hardship, there's struggle, there's warfare. But when you enter a new season, in the new season, you will do things effortless. You will see supernatural favor. You will experience uncommon favor. You will experience unusual favor. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The new season is full of provision. Amen. God will move you from the land of nothing to the land of just enough and to the land of more than enough. I prophesy over you that in this new season, you will enter the season of full provision. The season of more than enough. The season of overflow. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the new season, there will be new opportunities that you haven't experienced before. Now, let's do this quick. How do you enter the new season? Number one, forget the past. Forget the past. Apostle Paul wrote in Philippians 3, 13 and 14. He said, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. 
But one thing I do, forgetting the thing that are behind and press where? Forward. So number one, forget the past. No one can enter a new season while holding on on the past. No one can enter the new season while holding on on the, on the past. You have to allow the past to go. We have to shut the door on the past in the name of Jesus. Because the new season, there are new blessings. Amen? Come on, amen, church. Number two, look forward to the new. Be expectant. Amen. Renew your mind. Amen. Be expectant. Wake up expectation inside of you. Amen. Wake it up. Tell your expectation. Wake up. Come on, expectation. Wake up. It's time to possess. It's time for favor. It's time for new opportunity. It's time for a bigger house. It's time for a better car. It's time for fresh anointing. You have to be expectant. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible said, do not remember the former things. Nor consider the things of all. Come on, everlasting life. God is doing a new thing. Hallelujah. Be expectant. Glory to God. Glory to God. New blessing is coming. New blessing is there. New businesses are there. You open up your own business. Hallelujah. You're starting a good work. You're receiving promotion, elevation in the new season. You have to expect it. I don't know about you. I am expectant. I'm expecting greater things. I'm expecting greater works. I'm expecting big stuff. Hallelujah. I will not limit God in the new season because God is doing a new thing. Hallelujah. He's going to spring forth. It means it will happen effortlessly because God is in control. Can I hear amen? Can I hear amen? In this new season, you will buy a new house. Be expectant. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will move from negative to positive. Hallelujah. You will move from $100 in the bank account to $1 million. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I prophesy over you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will be a financier of the kingdom of God. It's your new season. It's your season of favor. It's your season of abundance. It's your season of increase. Hallelujah. See you opening businesses. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Great things will begin to happen in this new season. But you have to press forward to the new. You have to be expectant to the new. In that God say, I am doing a new thing. It's not what you've seen before. You haven't seen it before. You haven't seen it before. It's a new thing, better thing, great thing, awesome stuff. Glory to God. Because spirit of might is upon you to do big stuff. God will move you from doing little stuff to big stuff. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, I thank you for this new season. I thank you for this new season of favor. Father, I give you praise and I give you glory. In the name of Jesus. So number three. Make necessary changes in your life. Make what? Necessary changes in your life. You can't keep on doing the same thing and want a different result. If you want a new result, you have to change the way you do things. Amen. Come on, amen. I know some people don't want to hear it. You got to change the way you do things. Because God is doing a new thing. You can't keep on using the old formula for the new season. There's a new formula that God is providing. There's a new formula that God is about to give you. The old formula got to go. Remember Peter. Remember Peter. 
He was fishing. He fished all night. All night there was nothing. He went in the deep. In those days you have to go in the deep. Not in the shallow. You go in the deep. To throw your nets. But there was no fish. He came back. He was watching his net. Then Jesus came in. He was at the shallow hand. Jesus preached the word of God. Why Jesus preaching? His season changes. He's coming from the season of nothing. Moving to the season of abundance. In the shallow, you got it. No, you didn't get it. In the shallow. They don't fish in the shallow. They fish in the deep. A lot of fish are in the deep. Not in the shallow. There's no much noise in the shallow. At the edge. But because Master Jesus stepped in. His season changes. Jesus told after when, when he finished, he said, throw your nets into the deep. But it was not deep. It was shallow. In the spirit realm, it was deep. Because Master Jesus is in the house. Peter was shocked. He said, what? I have thought all night. In other words, there is no fish. I don't want to preach this time. I don't have enough time. But the obey. In the new season, there will be new instruction. In the new season, there will be new opportunity. Remember, God is doing a new thing. Amen? So make a change necessary in your life. Amen. Amen. How do you do that? Number one, we are number three, but under that, align yourself to God's priorities. How many want to be successful in this new season? We have to change the way we do things. God must be forced. Amen. You see, align yourself to God's priorities. What are God's priorities? His kingdom, his kingdom, yeah, evangelism is part of it. His kingdom and your relationship with God. Amen. Your relationship with God is so important in this new season. Because God will give you instructions that is not coming from man, it's coming from God. Opportunity will come that you have never seen before. It's coming from God. So align yourself to God's priorities. What are those? His kingdom. And your relationship with him. Quick. Matthew 6, 13. Seek first. The kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And all these things. Will be added. Amen. Want to be successful in this new season. I may want God to bless them. I may want to open a new business. I may want to buy a new house. Don't go after that. Go after the kingdom. Hallelujah. Reverse your priorities. Even though you need a house, even though you need a car, even though you need a business, but focus on the giver of the business. Focus on the giver of that blessing. It will give you what you don't bargain for. Expect the unexpected. Are you hearing me, church? Let's just quick. Next one. Renew your mind. Oh, my God. I wish I had time to do this. Renew your mind. You can't have the old mindset. And you want to possess 
the new with the old mindset. The new mindset is needed to possess in the new season. Change your way of thinking. Amen. Don't expect new results doing the same thing. Open to new things. Do you know what I study? I study that many people have challenges in starting a new start. Beginning. They are afraid to start. Do you know why? Because no, they don't know what challenges will come with the new start. They don't know what challenge, what is good is in the new. Sometimes people are reading the statistics that the many businesses or many people fail. But what you have to understand, you have the king of glory with you. You are not alone by yourself because you are seeking the kingdom of God and all is righteousness. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So renew your mind. Do not expect new results doing the same thing. Be open to the new. Let's go to Romans 12 too. I need to stop quick. And I'm almost finished. He said, do not conform to this world. But be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Change your thinking. Your way of thinking. The way you used to think in the hold, I can do it. I'm tired. You can do all things. To Christ, that threaten you. You are more than conqueror. Nothing can stop you. Challenges are there to take you to another level. Challenges are there to equip us. Trials are there to perfect us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Do it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So renew your mind. The next one, take risks that you haven't taken before. Risks that you haven't taken before. Risk. Do you know walking in faith is risk? Some of you may know that. Take risk you haven't taken. He said, the just shall live by faith. Not by what you see. Not by what you see. Many people want to see before they take chances. Hello? God told Abraham to leave his family, to leave his town, and go to a place I will show you. He didn't even know where he was going. Come on, be honest. How many of you will go? (laughs) How many of you will go? God said, pack your load. Leave your family house. And go. On your way going, I will show you where you are going. Some of you will not leave the house. He said, God, I will not go until you show me where I'm going. That does not make sense. Does it make sense? Most miracles don't make sense. Pack your load. You don't want your neighbor ask you, where are you going? <laughs> Pastor, where are you going? <laughs> I don't know. God said, pack my load. Leave my family. And begin to what? And begin to go. Go where? Some of them will say, you are crazy. Say that this church you are going to. Say this church. The just. Do you know what that means? I wish I have time. The just shall what? How many just do I have here? That means you have no choice but to live by faith. You have no choice. If you are just. If you are unjust, you have choice. You can live by sight. The Bible says we do not look to the things that are seen. 
we look to the things that are not what? Your blessing is in the unseen. Hello? I'll finish this. Take the risk you haven't taken before. Number two, examine your heart. Please write it down. Examine your heart. Never assume that you are always right. That's why most people don't even enter the new because they never change. They thought they are always right. Nobody is always right. Check your heart. Oh, I'm right. I got it. I got it. No, you didn't get it. No, no, no. No, you didn't get it. It's like Peter. Jesus said, throw it to the net. Peter said, I throw all night. Yeah, I'm a fisherman. Peter was a professional fisherman. Really? When a fisherman said there's no fish, I thought all night there's no fish. No, there's no fish. In the deep, there was no fish. Not to talk about the shallow, there was fish. Peter said, I know there's no fish. But throw it. Also, let me tell you, also Peter, this Peter always. Jesus was coming on the seashore, walking. He was walking on the water. They thought he was a ghost. Everybody was afraid. As he moved closer to them, Peter said, if it is you, Lord, command me to come. Amen? Some of you in this new season, you have to walk on the water before you receive your breakthrough. You have to walk on the water. You have to do the impossible. But according to the word of the master, if the master don't give instruction, please don't walk on the water, you will sink. <laughs> I got to stop. Are you hearing me? You got to walk on the water. You know what Peter said? At your word. At your word. The speaker said he didn't walk on the water. He walked on the word of God. You have to walk on the word of God. Amen? So, not the next one. Examine your heart. Never assume that you are right. Always go to the Holy Spirit and ask him. No, this is wisdom I'm giving you today, church. Never think you are right. In this season, we have to be led by the Holy Spirit. Go to the Holy Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit to lead you. Holy Spirit, if I'm doing anything wrong, Holy Spirit, correct me. Let me know. Now, let me ask you a few questions, then I will give you one more. I will stop. What area do you need change? Please write it down. What area? Do you need change? Ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Because it's very important. When your heart changes, it is an indication to God that you are ready for the new season. Is it beautiful? Ask the Holy Spirit, which area do I need to change in my life? Ask the Holy Spirit, is anything that I'm doing wrong? Because I keep on getting the same result. You getting the one the same result. If you want to get a new result, you have to change the way you do things, and your heart must change. For God is our heart; He looks into it. When your heart changes, that means you are ready for what. For the new. Next one, let me give you be repentant before God. Repentance opens the door to a new season to come. 
repentant opens what? Repentant opens the door for a new season to come. What area in your life have you disobeyed God? You know, it's not a shout message. It's a reality message. That's what is going to change you. Which area have you disobeyed God? Or which area you are disobeying God? When you make that correction, you are in a new season. When God forgives you, you are in a new season. What decision have you made outside of God? I like when the church is quiet. What decision have you made outside of God? Think about it. And ask God to forgive you. Do you still want to go to a new season? Which area? Then when you know it, repent. Is there pride in your life? Amen? Amen? It's okay if there's pride. Repent. Amen? Is there unrepentancy in your life? I wish I had a new season. When you follow this, I'm telling you, you move to a new season. Repentance, even if it's spiritual, repentance always takes away legal right from the enemy. Yes. Repentance always takes away legal right or legal standing from the enemy. The moment legal standing is taken away, you move to a new season. Are you sharing me? If there's a pride, Humble yourself, repent, and enter the new season. Can we shout amen? amen. Can we shout amen? amen? Amen. I will go over it one more time, then we will take offering. Number one, shut the door on the past. Forget the past. Forget the past. Look forward to the new. Forget the past. No one that can enter the new without shutting the door on the past. When God declare, when God declare the new, that means he want to put an end to the old. The old must be over first before you enter the what? The new. Look forward to the new. Amen? In other words, be expectant. Number three, make a necessary Change in your life. Amen. One of the changes, if you don't put God first, put him first from now on. Amen. Put his kingdom and your relationship with him first. Amen. Come on. Amen, church. When you do that, God will give you unexpected. He will give you some blessing you didn't ask for. Amen. God will give you favor in every area of your life. Because there's something, I will teach this another time, the, the divine principle of the first. Divine what? Divine principle of the first. God wants force to be given to him. <laughs> divine what? Principle of the first. The reason why a lot of people are not prospering and not moving into the new is because they don't put God first. It's a divine principle of the first. When you read the Old Testament, God, God told them, I want your first male child. First belong to me. Also, he said, I want your tenth. First tenth of the hundred. Not the last tenth. False, set it aside. Your tent belong to me. Amen. Amen. Your children belongs to me. So when you understand the principle and the divine law of force, it is a law. When you put God first, it will put you first. 
When you put him last, he will put you last. Uh, because that means you don't honor him. When you honor him, false belong to our God. You want to be blessed? You want to be wealthy? You want your enemy to bow to, bow to you? Hallelujah. You want to be false in everything? You put God first. Hallelujah. Every transaction will close. Hallelujah. God will remove king for you. He will overthrow president for you if you put him first. Come on, somebody says first. Come on, somebody say first. Come on, somebody say first. When you put him first, he will have all this prosperity. New car, new house. He knows what you need. That's what I do. We put him first. God is first in our life. Amen. My family is second. Amen. Amen. God is first. Pastor Masha is second. Pastor Masha is not first. I love her dearly, but she's second. God is first. Mama is second. When you put God first, it will put you first. When you put it God first, it will bless you. Everything you need will be added. Look at the word added. Added. Seek ye and is. And all these things. What are all these things? New business. Not only all that you need. All that you want. It will bless you exceedingly and abundantly. In the mighty name of Jesus. It will make your enemy bless you. It will make your enemy come before you and bow before you. Hallelujah. When you move from the old to the new, you will not live empty handed. <laughs> All the blessed. I got to stop. I got to stop. Come on, somebody say first. Say, God, you are first in my life. Your kingdom is first in my life. In this new season, I'm going to put you first. In the mighty name of Jesus. I'm going to set my priorities. In the mighty name of Jesus. You're looking for a job? When you put God first, job will be looking for you. Job will be chasing you. You need a business. You need a business. Hallelujah. Successful business. Put God first. When you put God first, opportunities will be coming to you. Unexpected will be coming to you. If you put him first. Come on, say first. Yes. Say first. Yes. His kingdom first. My relationship first. With him. Amen. Let me give you this revelation. Let me give you this revelation. Whom did God create for? Who did he say? Adam. You don't know that? You know it. Say Adam. 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 How come God didn't create Adam and Eve the same time? Who is after me? You are the goat. How come he created who first? Adam. But then after he created Eve. God only created, in, in theology, we call it direct creation. The only direct creation was who? Adam. Eve was not direct creation. Because God does not copy. He do it one time. <laughs> it's the devil that copy. He is a copycat. He copied God. Are you hearing me? He created who first? Direct creation. Say direct creation. Say direct creation. He did not create Eve direct. We call that what? Indirect. He put him to sleep. He put him to sleep. And he took a what? A rib. And he created what? Eve. Then when Adam woke up, he said what? My, my, my. My, 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 my. My, 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 my. My, 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 my. My, 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 my. 
my, 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 my. I said to myself, if God did another direct creation, direct creation, probably Adam would say, I don't know you. Oh, no, you didn't get it. You didn't get it. You didn't get it. If Adam, if he didn't do that, God created direct creation. God didn't look and say, no. But he took a rib out of him. That's what they call it, woman. Woman. Adam said, my, my, my. This is the bone of my bone. And the flesh of my flesh. <laughs> Are you hearing me? But this is the question. Why? And I will go, I promise. I know time. And I promise. Why? God did create them the same. God wants to establish that the first relationship is between God and man. Not with man and woman. Not, not who? Man and woman. Because who knows? Look at Adam went crazy. My, my, my. <laughs> it's the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh. <laughs> if God created them at the same time, Adam would not have a relationship with God. He will not know God. The guy went crazy. My, my, my. And God is saying, Adam, I'm here. My, my, my. Adam, I am here. My, my, my. But God was trying to say the first and important and the essential relationship is between God and man. And any relationship that will be successful must start with God and man. Come on, somebody shout, amen. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yes. Yes. I got to go. But in this new season, you have to change your priority. If you put your husband or your wife first, you got to change that. You got to put God first. You and your wife and your husband second. God wants to be first in everything. Can I hear you shout, amen? Can I hear you start a resounding amen? It has to be first. That's what we call divine law of the first. I will come and teach that. Your life will change when you turn things around and just make God first. God knows what you need. He knows what you want. He knows what's going on with you before you open your mouth. Oh God. Isaiah 65, 24. He said, before you call, I will. <laughs> While you are yet speaking, he's talking to those that put God first. Come on, say first. Come on, say first. Come on, say first. Come on, say first. Say God is first in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, let's give him praise and glory. Come on, let's give him praise. Y'all better jump to your feet and give him a hand. Jump to your feet. Come on, come on, come on, people. Come on. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. I need some noise. I need some noise. I need some noise. I need some noise. He said, make a joyful noise. A joyful noise. I hear nobody. Make a joyful noise. to know something. Years ago when I saw it in the scripture, and I've said it here before, make a joyful noise. I said, so God, what noise? 
you know, you say, give me some joy for music or some, and, and, and I realized the difference between a, a, a noise and music is one is arranged and one is not arranged. So now he's saying, give me all of it. Give me the noise because it's unto me. Give me the music. It's unto me. Give me a hand clap because it's unto me. Give me a shout because it's unto me. Amen. Make a joyful this. The full meaning of a wave offering. It means that everything that I am and all that I have, I give to you. So for the next few seconds, just where everybody is waving. It, it, he just said, will you put him first? Will you put him first? I give you everything, everything, all that I have, all that I am. I give you my home, my family, my children, my husband, my, my God, my vision. You belong, it belongs to you. Oh, glory, glory, hallelujah. We give you glory. Oh, we give you praise and adoration. Oh, my, 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 my. It's time. Your worship continues. Your worship continues. Anybody, let me see your hand if you know that giving unto God is part of your worship. And if you don't know that, that may mean you don't read your Bible. Because David was always finding a place. Glory to God. Oh, glory to God. He's the same one that says, how can you give God something that calls you nothing? Glory, he was always pitching a camp. My God, to give him a burnt offering and to give him some gift back. Glory to God. So this is your worship as you continue to give. Amen. Amen. Somebody please follow the direction. We want an amazing praise. All right, guys. We're going to follow the envelope. Anyone else envelope? And by the way, um, 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 there was a, somebody for the first time on today. Just want to say hello to him. Is it AJ or oh, PJ? Oh, he's not here. Anyway, we want to welcome him. Somebody said, you know, he's a first time visitor. So we want to welcome him on today. We did, I don't believe, we, I don't, anyway. We welcome him, welcome him indirectly on Friday. So we want to welcome him again. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. All right. Anybody needs an envelope? Praise God. Amen. Amen. And the ways to give through Cash App, Barabazoka. Through Cash App. I heard the Lord say somebody's really waiting on something. I don't know what it is. You're waiting on something. You're waiting on something. You're waiting on something. And God says, my God, you've been thinking of it. It's been coming to your mind like, should I sow a seed? And God said, yes. So a seed. It's like you're waiting. Something 
it needs to burst forth and God to put a seed on it. Amen. 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 To Cash App, glory to God, Everlasting Life CC, to the website, everlastinglife.org forward slash give, to PayPal, hallelujah, and, and, and um, Zelle, finance at everlastinglife.org, glory to God, amen. Those are the ways, some of the ways to give, glory to God, amen. Um, should they still call the phone number? Should they still call 301? Okay, you could also call for the ones that don't have access to this and you want to give and you're watching here, 301-776-7770, 301-776-7770, amen, we want an amazing praise, amen, as uh, we welcome Sister, uh, Sister Rhea, follow the direction of Sister Rhea, amen, an amazing praise. Invention, something about Christ that you can share with us. What is it like? Something between us, because you know, between the house of God, you came here by yourself. You have to thank God. Somebody, some people stepped in and helped you, but the Lord says you've been faithful to this and understand that God says there is an invention when it comes to cleaning, yeah. something that is very different. Amen. And so we go to it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can you stand with me, please? Somebody say divine order. Somebody say it like you really mean it. Divine order. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. We're about to do this communion right here. Glory to God. Uh, Pastor, Sam, oh, you coming?
principle is the purpose of the Lord's Supper. Number one, we look backward to remember who we are in Christ. Number two, we look upward to thank God for sending him and his death. Number three, we look forward to amend our ways with God. And number four, we look around and thank everyone that has offended us. Unforgiveness always starts with offense. And there's a spirit of offense in the world. We call it scandal. The word offense in Greek means scandalon. Scandalon. It means a trap. It means a bait. And the enemy used this to trap believers. It's like going fishing. see the hook, but the hook is the one holding the bait. So the fish will come for the what? Which is what? Offense. And inside the offense, there's a hook of the enemy. Trap to get you. That will put you in. So we have to learn how to overcome offense. And you cannot escape it. No trap. Jesus said, offenses must what? No, you didn't hear me. It must what? It must come. If they offended you here, you go to another church. They're waiting for you there. <laughs> it's better to stay where you know what you're dealing with and you go to a fresh bait that you don't understand the bait. Uh, you can attack him, you attack him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So we have to learn how to overcome what? Offenses. Don't let it bother you. It must come. The only, on the earth, it must come. But in heaven, there's no offense. Everybody is delivered and everybody is safe. Some people might say, well, I am delivered from offense, you know. When you get a fish, have you gotten a fish before? You go fishing, you brought the fish, and what, what do you do with it? You go ahead. Good, good. You go into thing. What do you do? A lot of believers, when they receive salvation, they were never joking. They were never one. Joking. It's like getting a fish with the bait inside. Sometimes the hook is inside. And some is not inside. So you just let it and you put it in the fish. Then it begins to want to stick. That's what we are talking about. Are you know what I'm saying? So because you are saved, that doesn't mean you are delivered. Oh. I have to go. I have to go. I have to go. I have to go. Now let's partake. Let's partake. Go ahead. Let's partake. Let's partake. Yes. Let's partake. Come on, let's partake. That's why some of us in the kingdom, when we came to the kingdom, we are so sensitive to offense. Because the old offense is still there. You see, inside of us, it has gone deeper. And we bring it in the kingdom of God. It was sometimes we look at people, they say, how come you look at me funny? Because the previous church, that's how they were looking at you. All the previous relationship. And you are trying to get into the new relationship. 
So you can't take the old bait into the new relationship. You have to be gutted. You have to be gutted. But thank to Jesus, the anointing is there to deliver. The anointing is there to set free. Man, I got to stop. Okay, let's partake. Oh, God. Oh, God. Man, I know what to do. I'm sorry. Oh, God. It's always start with offense. Amen. If you don't deal with it right away, it grows. You don't grow up, it starts going deeper. The longer you wait, the deeper it goes. That's why unforgiveness is so concealed. You go from offense to what? Resentment. From resentment to unforgiveness. From unforgiveness to bitterness. From bitterness to unclean conscience. So unclean conscience means now you have become spiritual problem. God will help us. Amen. But the anointing of God is there to gut that thing out. Friends, it's dangerous. Maybe I, I, I will come with you guys with this series. Uh, on how unforgiveness starts. It starts with offense. I'm serious. It starts with offense. You can, if you can deal with offense, you will never get to unforgiveness. It will never get to discipline. Uh, um, the second one, uh, resentment. That's what Jesus said. That, that, that's what Jesus said. When your brother offends you, you are alone. alone. Don't bring your tough friend with you. There are four reactions. Four reactions. Number one, the first thing we do, we withdraw from that person. Number two, we become self-centered. Number three, we want to retaliate. I'm going to get you. Number four, what's number four again? Gossip. Gossip. And the first thing we do, we withdraw. And then begin to gossip. And in our gossiping, we become self-centered. And then say, I'm going to get him. Jesus is very clear. He said, do the opposite. The devil wants you to lose your brother. Or the devil wants you to lose your sister. I truly believe everyone that God has brought into your life is for a purpose. It's a for purpose. Amen. And whatever devil brings to you is a purpose. It's a devil. But who God brings is a purpose. We don't want to get into it. It's a lot I can say. It's a lot I can say. It's a lot I can say. It's a lot. Somebody need to hear it. Is it serious? You know, you don't be got that. You don't want to take the old bait into the new season. The old bait must go. Amen. We are all good people. That's right. It's okay if you don't answer, you are a good person. Amen. But there are offenses. That is inside of us. People have offended us. You know, people that love, they're the ones that receive most offenses. Why? Why is that? Because they're vulnerable. Right. They love their own people. Offend Jesus Christ, but I'm going to love you. I will train you with love. Amen. You will even teach me. This is a good message for end time ministry. Amen. Come on, Father, we thank you. Speak in words, speak into my heart, and for everyone. And we look forward to his return. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your body that was broken, your body that came from heaven, that you in fact into Mary's womb. Father, we thank you for that body. That was broken for us. Thank you for 39 stripes that you took. Father, even as they partake, whoever is sick, because you paid the price, they must be healed. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Let us partake.
The blood of Jesus is so powerful. It's so powerful. Learn how to even plead the blood of Jesus over yourself, over your children, in your house. Because the Bible says the life of the flesh is where? Blood is a container of what? Amen? As you lose blood, you are losing life. So when you put the blood of Jesus on yourself, guess what you are putting? You are putting the life of Jesus. The life of Jesus. The life of the flesh is in the blood. And when you plead the blood of Jesus, you are not pleading Adamic blood. Adamic blood comes from the soil of the earth. But Jesus' blood is from heaven. It's a divine blood. That's why the devil ate the blood of Jesus. And Jesus shed his blood seven places. I'm sorry, this church is an Holy Ghost church. I don't expect to have other believers to do it. Just change some things. God will change some things. We move by the Spirit. Jesus shed his blood seven times. In Leviticus, when the priest slaughtered the animal, what do you call it? Go, he slaughtered it. He will go into the temple. You got to get this revelation from God. You got to go what? Get the blood. That was before Jesus' blood. That was the shadow of the things to come. When they slaughter the animal, he will take the blood. And God said, go into the temple. Come on, someone say temple. Come on, someone say temple. He said, go to what? To the temple. And sprinkle the blood. How many times? Have you ever heard? Hebrews 12, that the blood of the sprinkle, of the sprinkle, so it started from the Old Testament before Jesus was crucified. They will come and they will sprinkle, how many times? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Why? To cleanse the temple. Say that, to cleanse the temple. Say it again. To cleanse the temple. When Jesus died, his blood was shed in several places. I know the church is quiet. Some of you haven't heard it before. Seven places. Who is now the temple of God? Not the physical temple. We are the temple of God. That seven places, Jesus shed the blood into the what? Come on, speak it. To what? Say it again. Say it again. It's to cleanse us. What they used to do in the Old Testament. But Jesus came to cleanse us. Number one place, and I will stop. I know time. Remember? Number one? The Garden of Gethsemane. First place he shed his blood was where? Remember Luke? The book of Luke? He said he was sweating. Remember? Not my will, but that will be done. His pulse inside broke. That's what it was. If you have a doctor, when you have intense agony, you are screaming hard. It's possible for your vein. Bust and start pleading with him. Are you hear what I'm saying? Start pleading with him. Because Jesus was screaming, My father, my father, he blood and blood and sweat. He dropped on the ground. He dropped that place where he sweat. For what? In one garden, we lost our willpower. But in another garden, 
with the second Adam, not the first Adam, we gain back our willpower. So your willpower has been restored in the garden of Gethsemane. What does that mean? That means you can say no to sin. Then that means you can say no to smoking. You can say no to alcoholism. You can say no to sexual immorality. You are in control. Your will should not rule over your spirit. Oh my God. We're going to stop. Oh, we got to stop. Six one hour, not today. You, you, you know why? Revelation brings miracles. Write it in now. Revelation. We didn't know. Even poverty. Do you know poverty has been broken? I may know that. Has been broken. How? When God caused Adam and Eve, he caused where? Ah. He caused where? what? When Jesus was going on the cross, what happened? On the same ground, on top, they picked it up and they put it where? And it bled. Poverty born greatness. They are in this season. Their intention is not to break poverty. What matters? What the enemy meant for bad? What you are going through is for your elevation. What you are going through is for your breakthrough. Come on, let's do communion. I can go on and go on and go on and go on and go on. Is the Holy Ghost? Holy Ghost collaborate with me. Holy Ghost is helping me. Hallelujah. Let's give thanks. Father, we thank you for your blood that was shed. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the life of the flesh is in the blood. We give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' mighty name. Saints, let us partake. Bible says, as often as we do this, we do this in remembrance of him. Amen? Amen. Um, we're going to dismiss, but this is what I'm going to do. I feel so much anointing that I, I don't want to take it back home. <laughs> I, I don't want to take it back home. We're going to dismiss service. Some people has to go. But I want to pray for two groups. Pastor Masha coming near me. She will have the third one. No, I'm serious. By revelation. Just, if we have to go home. Please go. But there's a few people I want to pray for today. A few people I have to pray for today. If you trust in God for healing, please, we just want to come and agree with you. One, two. Um, um, because Jesus has broken poverty, please come forward. I'm going to pray for you as well. If you're in business or job and you are struggling. And also here, you are expecting money that did not come. Oh, I see a few people. You're expecting money that did not come. Oh, yes, let me do benediction. Some people have to go, but come forward. I feel the anointing. I don't want to take it home. I don't want to get home and my wife and daughter slain in the spirit. <laughs> they say, where's my food? <laughs> but let me tell you something. Anointing is for a reason and a season. We're going to do benediction for those that have to go. Please go. Uh, just a few. Let's go back. Let's do something. This woman, you are healed. You are healed. The devil and the doctor will not be able to label you and give you something that God can heal you with his anointing. Whatever the doctor has spoken in your body, wrong with your body, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. 
receive your healing because Jesus paid the price. Jesus paid the price. And also hear that your breathing is becoming slower. Is that true? And I dismiss. That's your Reggie, where you come any service. Yes, thank you. Don't be too long. Praise the Lord. Could we all stand? I want to be dismissed, but I have to go. Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you for the service. Thank you for the outpouring of our pastor and our first lady. Father, the anointing that rests upon them as well. Refill them up, even as they continue to pour out. But, Father, I thank you for everyone that stayed, O oh Lord God, that we could not leave this anointing. And now, by the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the love of God, the sweet fellowship of his holy communion, Father, with us now and forevermore, in Jesus' name, let the church say amen. 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 amen.